too. Well, as uh, Kerry mentioned, uh, we've compressed this into two, two talks uh, into one, so pardon for the uh, barrage of information you are about to receive. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my esteemed co-authors and thank the selection committee for this award and uh, pleasure and honor for us to present this to our NAS community. Here are our disclosures. Nothing has changed in our, within the program. Uh, the non-surgeons within the group have no disclosures. We all know that the um, burden of osteoarthritis individually and societally is, is quite tremendous. Consistent outcomes uh, has led to uh, stable funding with regards to hip and knee arthroplasty. However, uh, due to inconsistent, fund, uh, inconsistent outcomes as well as uh, increasing demand, uh, funding for implant-based spinal surgery in particular has not, uh, is certainly still under scrutiny. Uh, work um, in our previous work, and sorry for this messy slide, as well as others around the world have compared the two groups and shown that stenosis surgery compared to hip or knee arthroplasty can give comparable outcomes, but this is only at the one to two year level. We have also shown that uh, similar uh, cost utilities uh, can occur. However, again, this data was based on the assumption that the outcome over time of the lifetime of the individual is durable. And this is actually a common assumption in most musculoskeletal uh, interventions from an economic perspective. So, so consequently, our study was to really assess whether or not the health-related quality of life was durable and sustainable based on our, uh, from our two-year data. And two was to assess uh, in a similar manner, does the cost utility maintain comparable levels at five-year uh, as well as projecting the lifetime uh, utility of the interventions uh, comparatively uh, with using five-year data rather than one or two-year data. For part one, the study essentially represents a longitudinal uh, cohort study with uh, patients with a minimum of five years and our primary outcome measures, health-related quality of life as measured by the SF36. The uh, study is fairly pragmatic and it really is to be looked at it from a 10,000 uh, foot perspective comparing across different populations um, uh, for one to two level spinal stenosis in patients with uh, primary hip and knee arth osteoarthritis. When we put through our inclusion exclusion criteria within our databases back in 2002 when we started this study, we had uh, 99 spine patients who met our inclusion criteria, 71 of them had a decompression alone the rest had instrumented fusions and of our degenerative spondylolisthesis. You can see that only uh, 17 of the 38 actually had a fusion. These patients were then uh, independently sexed, age, and date of surgery matched to our cohort of hip and knee uh, patients from our uh, registry. In our results for part one, um, just so we can present the data uh, comprehensively, our mean follow-up was essentially uh, seven years, uh, almost seven years for the spine and hip, uh, sorry, spine and knee cohort and eight years for the uh, hip cohort. When we assessed the difference uh, between baseline characteristics and outcome scores for the, those lost to follow-up, we didn't see any significant differences and, and our loss to follow-up, as you can see, was uh, quite excellent for uh, this duration of uh, a study with 79% and over uh, follow-up. When we looked at revision rates, now we defined revision rate as same site surgery for the hip and knee and also uh, same site plus revision uh, adjacent segment surgery for the spine. And as you can see, the revision rate for spine surgery was grossly uh, uh, higher for, uh, than hip and knee, but 65% of the revision spine surgeries were actually for the adjacent uh, segment. When we look at from a univariate perspective, the mean uh, change uh, was uh, significant for all groups in both the MCS and the PCS uh, aspects of the SF36. And there was actually no difference in the mean uh, end scores for uh, across the three groups. However, when we look at diff degree of change, which is our primary outcome measure, the hip replacements uh, were superior in change with 12 points of improvement versus eight for hip and knee, which were statistically and clinically not different uh, whatsoever. However, when we look at adjusted analyses, adjusting for age, baseline, uh, sex, uh, sorry, and demographics, as well as PCS and MCS scores, the hip still had a strong trend for superiority with regards to degree of change, but as you can see, 
the hip and knee outcome were so the hip, uh, sorry, the spine and uh, uh, knee outcomes were essentially identical. When we looked at our part two, we did a uh, cost utility assessment from the perspective of the healthcare system only. So this does not include societal cost, productivity cost, et cetera, or, or indirect cost of surgery for this uh, basically failed uh, group of patients uh, compared to if they were to continue on with uh, non-surgical treatment. You have to understand in our system, by the time these patients were uh, seen and then enrolled to actually have surgery, they had at least two years based on our waiting times of non-response and non-improvement. So they truly are the, the failures, the failures of the failures from a non-surgical perspective. And as such, we use them as a before and after control group. We assessed utilities from the SF6D at baseline two years and uh, five years. We did a median look at five years for the uh, cost utility assessments. And um, we assumed that the failed management uh, patients would continue on as a control with the same uh, utility as baseline, and we did a variety of sensitivity analyses to assess the uh, robustness of our uh, estimations and assumptions. Cost utilities were assessed in the uh, standard fashion, and it should be known that the more uh, longer time you can sustain a gain in quality adjusted life years, then the better your cost per quality obviously will be. When we look at um, overall gain in quality, uh, whether it's at the five year mark sorry, uh, or at the uh, lifetime estimates, the hip uh, replacements certainly were dominant with regards to uh, overall gain in quality adjusted life years. However, when we look at overall uh, cost uh, utility at the five year mark, you can see um, all interventions actually fall well below accepted thresholds for willingness to pay from a cost per, per quality gained uh, perspective. In fact, uh, and over the lifetime, spinal decompression has the, is, has the greatest uh, cost utility. However, if we compare implant-based surgeries such as fusion to hip and knee replacement, then the hip replacement uh, was more favorable with regards to its uh, cost utilities. Sensitivity analyses uh, adjusting the upper and lower limit of the uh, utility outcome, the cost of the interventions, the revision rates, the other drivers of cost such as inpatient or outpatient rehabilitation, and uh, our degree of discounting still showed that even in the worst case scenario, our cost per um, quality still were within the lowest uh, ranges of threshold. In Canada, it's 50,000. In the UK, it's 35,000. And in the US, it can be as high as $100,000 uh, for cost per quality. So there is global variation in what is accepted as a, uh, as a cost per quality uh, scenario. So our first study prov um, prov provides a direct comparison across the groups, uh, which is unique. We are looking at this from a 10,000 uh, foot perspective with regards to a pragmatic approach to assessing different interventions. And uh, with a lot of effort, we were able to get excellent follow-up at seven to eight years. The cost utility assumptions and methods of costing analyses were identical across the groups. We modeled their data based on long-term data rather than one and two year data that is typically um, uh, performed and our sensitivity analyses uh, showed robustness within the worst uh, case scenarios. We obviously have the limitations of a retrospective in inception cohort uh, with the inherent biases that may be differentially affected across groups and within groups as well as we know that the SF36 SFD can be sensitive to each of these populations. However, the difference in response between populations has not been studied, and that's certainly a potential limitation. The economic study certainly has uh, limitations in that we did not have a um, independent control group that would have not had surgery, and we did not follow them over time. We have other historical data that suggest that in our population that when they get to see us and they're booked for surgery, they pretty much stay the same or they actually get worse over time. But our biggest limitation is this study is purely from the perspective of the healthcare system. We did not uh, assess ongoing healthcare or um, um, societal costs. However, we included revision costs uh, from an implant and hospital perspective. So in conclusion, despite a higher revision rates, and we did not adjust for revision rate within our outcome analyses, um, patients undergoing spinal surgery for focal stenosis, and this has to be emphasized one and two level, can expect a comparable long-term improvement in their health-related quality of life compared to total knee replacement. Hip replacements in general are superior to both. 
surgery uh, for this population is also associated with acceptable and similar cost utility to two well accepted interventions and furthermore these findings are durable over time for all three interventions and certainly this finding uh, supports ongoing advocacy and improved and continued resource allocation for the treatment of spinal stenosis. Thank you.